In almost 30 years of maintaining an intense physical practice, I've always struggled to define myself and what I do. Am I a ballet dancer? A circus acrobat? A juggler? A surfer? I've done all of these and many more, but I've always struggled to define myself within a given discipline. This is my movement story. Growing up in my family, there was an explicit assumption that you had to have a physical practice. No matter what it was, each of us was expected to pursue something for physical fitness. My sister tried out tennis. My mom had her aerobics class. And when I was little, my dad started running marathons. One of my earliest memories is of running the first 100 meters with my dad in his very first marathon. I was eight years old. In high school, I ran cross country. My fastest ever race was a three mile race that I ran in 15 minutes flat. That's three consecutive five minute miles. But by senior year of high school, after 10 years as a runner, I was burnt out. I was tired of constantly being told to run faster and push harder, and I was bored. I'll never forget the day that I walked off the cross country team, walked into the front door of my parents' house, and announced that I had quit. It was a big disappointment. But because there was this assumption, this statement that you have to have a physical practice, very quickly I opened up a phone book and went to G's for gymnastics. And for the first time in my life, started making cold calls. The first four gymnastics gyms that I called said, are you pre-Olympian? Are you calling for your kid sibling? No, we don't offer gymnastics for a young adult with no experience. But the fifth gym on the list said, yeah, we have an adult gymnastics class twice a week, come on down. And the next night, 24 hours later, I walked into Redwood Empire Gymnastics in Petaluma, California, and my life was changed. I remember the smell of chalk when I walked into the warehouse. Somebody over in the corner doing God knows how many backflips on the trampoline, and somebody over here doing gymnastics giants on a high bar. I learned later they were called. In the few years that came after that first experience, I've dabbled in dozens of different modalities. Capoeira, breakdancing, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Muay Thai, surfing, trapeze, aerial silks, the list goes on and on and on. And throughout all of that, I've never found one community or one discipline of practice that fully encompasses everything I do, love, and have tried. Late in college, I was training for auditions with the Ecole Nationale de Cirque, Cirque du Soleil's training school. And my life changed again when I landed on my head on a trampoline. I was in chronic pain for a year and I was told by doctors and PTs that I talked to that I should probably not expect to do acrobatics again. I moved to San Francisco after college, still in chronic pain with not a lot of hope that it would get better. And I was introduced to a woman named Anat Banyel, who was herself the protege of Moshe Feldenkrais in his later years. Moshe was the originator of the Feldenkrais method, which is a form of somatic study where in deepening our own awareness of our movements and our physical body, we can create really pretty impressive change very quickly. As just one personal example, I took a workshop with Anat and she had us do these so subtle movements of the eyes. And I drove home that night kind of hazy, woke up the next morning and realized as I was preparing breakfast that for the first time in more than a year, I was no longer in chronic pain. I became a practitioner of that method and studied closely with a knot for more than six years. And even today, meet up with some of my dearest friends and colleagues every two to three months for about a week of what we call training which is deepening and, and refining these practices for ourselves. My life changed again in 2017. I was running Robin's Cafe in San Francisco and took my dog for a walk in the park across the street. There was a group of folks doing hand balancing and having lived in San Francisco for a decade, 
I kind of knew all of the really good hand balancers in the area and didn't know these folks. So I started chatting and asked where they were visiting from and what they did. Turned out the leader was a fellow named Johnny Sapinoso, who was himself a mentee of the world famous movement coach, Ido Portal. I quickly became obsessed with Johnny, his community, and Ido Portal's teachings. This work brought together the practices and principles from a wide variety of the movement disciplines I had studied. The balance from surfing, the, the, the fighting styles of Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu, the acrobatics of circus and hand balancing into uh, several different disciplines of study and with a community to go with it. Something else that Johnny's community brought for me was just the routine that by having a community to practice with, I was actually even better at practicing on my own as well. My movement practice today is really eclectic. I have four to six different physical practices that I'm pursuing at any one time, different projects that I'm working on. Hand balancing, hot and cold exposure, sauna and cold plunge, lifting, subtle isolations of different parts of the body, moving the head in relationship to the rest of the body, which is not something I thought I would ever be able to do after my neck injury all those years ago. My practice doesn't fit into a given category, but pulls from different disciplines and I'm constantly looking to get better in one way or another. No one I have ever met lives at the intersection of hard and soft physical practices of intensity and delicacy that I do in my own physical practice, but that's okay. I do. I live here and I practice here. Now when someone stops me on the street because I'm doing a handstand or I'm doing some weird isolation that they've never seen before, I say that I practice for myself from a wide variety of different practices. And when they ask how they can get started, my advice is very similar. Pull on a thread that's interesting to you. Find a discipline of study, pole dancing, surfing, martial arts. It doesn't matter what it is, but find something that's interesting and begin exploring it. See what you can learn from another area of your life and apply. And then when you're done with that one, leave it behind because you can always pick it up again later. It doesn't matter how good you are or what the desired outcome is. Just get started. Follow your curiosity. Keep practicing.